All right, so the couple of things I want to review here, guys, with you. On a position versus time graph, what can we get? What can I, let's say, read directly off of a position versus time graph? I can't read distance directly off the graph. I can calculate distance, but I can read position and time. It was a trick question. Okay. Yeah. All right, position and time are the two things I can read off a of position time graph. I can calculate distance. I can calculate what else? Velocity. And if I can calculate velocity, I must be able to calculate one of the things I need to get that. Okay, I can also calculate speed, but it wasn't what I was thinking of. Displacement. Okay, those are the things I can get off of this graph. But it's okay. You were just you were ahead of me. Speed was yeah. Speed's one of the things I can calculate. Okay. Um, so what we're looking at on this position versus time graph. Okay. First thing it wants us to find is the total displacement. Well, total displacement is final position minus initial position. So here's my final position, 0.5 meters, and here's my initial position. 0.2 meters. So 0.5 minus 0.2 equals 0.3. And that would be positive, okay, because it's a vector quantity. Everyone follow me there? Okay. Uh, if I want to find the total distance traveled, does direction matter for that? No. So I got to find out how far it goes in each section of the graph where it moves, and then do what with all those numbers? Add them all together, right? All right, so here he goes from 0.2 to 0.1. So that's 0.8 meters. Then what is he doing here? Okay, he's at position 1, and over here he's at position 1. He's not moving. All right, so he doesn't go anywhere. That part doesn't have any distance, right? It's 0. Okay, then down here he goes from 0.1 to point, or sorry, from 1.0 to 0.5. So that's 0.5, which tells me... Okay, the distance traveled is 1, uh, 0.3. So 0.8 plus 0.5 is 1.3 meters. Is it ringing a bell from yesterday? Okay. Now, if I want to find the average velocity, if I had one single line, I could calculate its slope. Yeah, okay, I could calculate its slope, but I don't have one single line here. So if I don't have one single line, I'll have to do this. Average velocity is total displacement over total time. In other words, I'm imagining that there's a line that looks like that, and I'm calculating its slope. Is everyone okay with that? That's really what I'm doing. All right, so my total displacement was 0.3. The total time is 7 seconds. All right, and so that's going to give me uh, 0 0.04 meters per second, and that has to be positive because velocity is a vector quantity. Okay. And then last thing, calculate the average speed. Well, average speed is total distance over total time. Okay. And there's no other way to get that off of a position versus time graph than to simply use the total distance you found and divide it by the total time. Okay. So when we do that, uh, we'll have our 1.3 meters over 7 seconds, and that should give us 0.19 meters per second. Okay. Everyone good with that? Right, so that gives you, that's the first one. I think most of you had started that one at the end of the day, but okay, just use it for a review. All right, on a velocity versus time graph, what can I read off of that? Same trick. Velocity and time, because that's what it shows. All right, um, what does the slope of that graph represent? Okay, so let's just have a quick look here. If we've got a velocity versus time graph, this axis is in meters per second. This axis is in seconds, and my line goes like this. All right. If I find the slope of this line, I'm finding how much the velocity changes and how quickly it does that. What do we call how fast velocity changes? Acceleration. Okay. Slope of this graph is acceleration. Okay. And we can look at a unit analysis of that as well and find that when we divide meters per second by seconds, we get meters per second per second or meters per second squared, which are the units for acceleration. Everyone with me there? Okay. Um, what if I want to find out how far it goes or its displacement, either one? I got meters per second here. And I got seconds here. I want to get 
meters for my units. What should I probably do with them? Multiply them. Yeah. Okay. If I multiply them, I will get meters. Okay, because meters per second times seconds, the seconds cancel, and I'm left with meters. Which essentially means I'm finding the area under the line. I'm using this. Average velocity equals total displacement over total time. Okay, and to find the total displacement, I need the average velocity, which if this is the initial and this is the final, the average occurs right there, half the height, right? Finding the area of a triangle is base times height over 2. Okay. All right, little things to remember there because that's the kind of stuff you're going to have to do on those worksheets I gave you yesterday. All right, so let's get to work on those, and we'll go over any that give you trouble. All right, so total displacement over the whole trip. Remember that we have to find the area underneath the line on a velocity versus time graph. Okay, now we say under, but we really mean between the line and the x-axis. All right, so on this graph, that's a little bit tricky because some of the line is below the x-axis. That just means the height of the triangles is negative. Right? which would account for the fact that in these parts of the graph, like here and here, the object is traveling backwards. Okay, Its velocity is negative during these parts, so its displacement should also be negative during these parts. All right? So what I'm going to do is just make shapes that I can easily find the area of, right? and then get what I need from there. All right? So um, let's say I've got... Uh, Oh, that didn't work out very straight. Okay, let's say I'm going to use um, these two triangles here. I'm going to use that triangle, that triangle, this rectangle. I um, can maybe use, let's say, this rectangle here, okay. this triangle there, that triangle there, and that triangle. Can I find the areas of all those shapes? I can. It's a lot of work, but that's the only way to do it. Okay, is to find the areas of all of those shapes and then do what with them? Add them up. All right. Well, let's just have a look here. Okay. So on this one here, I've got uh, a base of one, two, three. Okay, and a height of negative 3, so this is 4.5, okay, because 3 times 3 is 9, divided by 2 is 4.5, okay, and then I've got this little triangle here that has a base of 1 second and a height of 3, so the area of that little triangle is negative 1.5, and then I've got this one here that has a base of 1 and a height of 2, so its area is, no, we're going to assume it's a whole number, I, I'm going to say it goes through there. Let's just say it goes through this point so we can make life easy on everyone. It was supposed to go through that point. Okay? All right. So we got a base of 1 and a height of 2, so we're looking at 1 there. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So we got 5 on the base, 2 on the height, so the area of that is 10 because it's a rectangle. Okay? And then uh, on this one here, uh, this one is 0.5, right? It's only half a second in between here. So we got a height of 2 and a base of 0.5, so the area of this one is 0.5. And then this one here is a base of 1.5 and a height of negative 6. So this is negative 4.5. Okay, this one here has a height of 4 and a base of 2. Okay, so we're looking at 4 is the area of that one. Um, and then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 is the base on that one and a height of negative 2. So we're looking at negative 4. And then this one has a base of 1 and a height of negative 2, so it's negative 1 for area. Okay, now if I add all those together, okay, so I got negative 4.5 plus negative 1.5 plus 1 plus 10 plus 0.5 plus negative 4.5 plus negative 4 plus negative 4 
plus negative 1. And I get negative 5. And that's not what I have on my answer, is it? I get negative 12. Did I miss a square? Oh, this one. Yeah, that's why. Oh, that would make it uh, work out to 13. Not much closer. Um, yeah, it could just be that misreading a couple of these. I mean, if you're close, this is how we do it. Okay. Usually on a question like this, I give a little bit of leeway. Okay, in terms of you know, like uh, Philip was saying, this one's 0.8, and I said, well, let's just say it's one. Right? Uh, there's always a little bit of leeway on my answer key for you know, where did you read the graph at? Not very much, but a little bit. Okay. Everyone with me there? So you got to calculate the area of all of those shapes, okay, and then you'll have it. Yeah, wait or oh, yeah, I said wait.